So here are the antennas that I made. This is a clover leaf and this is a skew planar wheel, circularly polarized antennas for my FPV video system. These are for 5.8 gigahertz uh, system and mine's from Fox Tech Hobby. Um, they're pretty easy to make and you know if you have some basic soldering skills I think that these should not be any problem for basically anyone to make. So to make these you need to have some wire. I had to get this online. It's MIG soldering wire. It's 35 thousandths of an inch and it's like this. It's copper on the outside. You need to get the cable and wire for this. This is from eBay. It's like Wi-Fi extension cable and you want to make sure it has this on there, this type of uh, connector for the Foxtech system. It's called an RP-SMA adapt uh, connector and then it comes with some wire on there. You're going to end up cutting this off. Just You're going to get this. This is like $1.99 for one of them on uh, eBay. You're going to need something to measure angles with. You're going to need like a pair of pliers, something to strip wires with. You just need like a pen, some solder, a soldering gun or soldering iron, hot glue gun, a little file to file the metal down because you're going to want to get exact lengths on this. Um, I use little pink foam, these little things. These are like little soldering jigs that I've made. I'll show you how to use this. And then you need something to measure distance width or length and you need to get very very specific lengths so this is a digital uh, caliper and I would really recommend using this if you're going to be making these. So I'm going to show you how to make the clover leaf antenna which has these three wires and the other and, and this goes on the video transmitter on the video receiver goes the skew planar wheel which has four of these wires you build them the exact same way except you use four here and these are all at 90 degree angles to each other and on this one you use three wires that are at 120 degree angles to each other you just do the exact same process but you just use those different angles to create these two different antennas and I'll be showing you how to make the clover leaf so I got instructions how to do this from the website rcexplore.se and if you go on there on do it yourself section you can easily find the directions how to do this. I've modified a little bit just to make it a little bit easier. So start out with you want to cut off a chunk of this wire. So careful this is wound really tightly on here and if you let it go it just will like unwind like a spring. So be really careful with that. So I'm just going to pull out some, take my wire cutters and snip that. So I'm going to be making this for the frequency 5945, which is channel 8 on the 5.8 gigahertz video system that I have. So my initial cut, so on this website you can actually put in the, uh, I'm doing that right now, you can put in the frequency that you want to make it for and it tells me that I need to cut each little section of wire to 51.64 millimeters. So I'm going to turn on my digital caliper here and loosen it up slide it to zero zero it and then move it out to 51.64 as you can see these are really really small distances so it takes a little while to get exact on here but you want to be as precise as possible to get the best video signal so now that I have this, this distance in between these two uh, prongs on the caliper is 51.64. So the way that I do it is I initially, I kind of, I set it on here, I set it flush to this surface. Then I kind of mark just past, I make it longer than it needs to be. And then I take these wire cutters and I snip that off. So I need to make three of these for the clover leaf. So here are my three wires. Um, so now I'm going to go back and measure it like this and see just how over I was. So on here I notice I've got a little bit of a chunk and I just kind of eye how much I need to take off. And I don't want to take off more than that but now I go back with my wire cutters and I snip off just a little bit extra. There we go. Now I remeasure 
And I'm really close actually, that was a pretty good snip. So now comes this metal file. So I take this piece now and I put it on the file and I file it down just a little bit. Now I do it on both ends because it's also these corners are kind of sharp and weird from using the wire cutter. So it's a good way to kind of even them out make them easy to work with. So I sand a little bit or file a little bit and then I check the distance. Still a little long. Perfect. Uh, as you can see this wire is perfectly straight but it fits in there really really precisely. That's yeah that's really good. Happy with that so now I do it for the remaining wires. Great, so now I have my three wires at the exact same uh, length for each, all three of them. Now I need to put in two 90 degree bends on both of them, uh, on, on two on each wire. So once again I go to the website, I put in the frequency I'm using, 5945, and it tells me the bends need to be at 12.91 millimeters. So here on the caliper, loosen it up, go to 12.91. All right. <clears throat> now to do this, I take the wire and I set one end right against here. Then I take my pliers. These are actually uh, a hospital tool, but any sort of plier will work well. I just like these put up against this surface and I have this then I need to do the bend get as close to 90 degrees as you can I just kind of eyeball it it's a little much there we go so now I do it on the other side so now your wire looks like this and do this for the remaining two wires. Alright, now all three wires of mine look the same. So now you need to create a bend. You, you arc this, this length right here. You need to bend it so it's kind of like this, so it has like a curvature to it. The way that I've liked to do it, and you want to make this end come around so it meets this end at like about a hundred and five degree angle it says on the website so what I do is I take my tool, I mean you can use pliers, you can use anything here once again I latch on then I give it a slight bend I move a little bit further along the curve and I give it a slight bend, I'm pushing away so I'm going to do it again so as you can see I'm adding a little bit of curve in here so I keep doing it. So I'm going to start, once you get past halfway, clamp it on the other side and go like this. So I keep going and just gently adding a little more and taking away until I get a nice curve in here. And you do not want to disrupt these 90 degree angles on both sides. As you can see here, I've done my best, actually yeah, this is pretty well preserved on both sides, the 90 degree angles. And once you add in some curve, you can kind of press it with your hands. So now, there we go. Uh, this is not quite 105, but if I'd make these meet down here all the way, that's past 90 degrees, so I'm happy with that. So you do this to your remaining two wires. So here I have my three wires, and they have all the bends that they need in them. So the next step is to add a little bit of an angle in these. So what I do 
is I take it and I pull the right side up a little bit. So this is kind of what it looks like from head on. I think you can appreciate that here. This wire that coming off is higher than this one. So I do it to remaining two wires. Now here is something that I came up with. I created this little, what I'm calling a soldering jig. And basically, this is what you need your something to measure angles with. These, this line, this line, this line, there's a 120 de degree angle between all of these. So I do that and create a hole in the middle. Then I took a knife and I just sliced a little slit in each of these, on each of these lines. So basically, what I can do so I can take one end of this, I can slip it right in there. So I can do this for the remaining two wires. There we go. So that is already, you can just look at that, and that's really close to what this looks like already. And when you're doing this, as you can see, if you look across the bottom of the antenna, these bottom wires are all flat to each other. So I don't put this these down in here too far. I keep them up toward the surface so I can make sure that they're flat so I can see them in their entire length. So now what I do, I want to have, from what I've noticed, I do about a 45 degree angle right there. So like with this wire and with this wire. So I need to go up a little bit. This wire definitely needs to come up. So that's pretty good. So now all I want to do is I'm going to just start moving these wires around back and forth until all of the, the three middle wires meet. If you can see that there, this is actually, these meet perfectly. As you can see, it's all they all come together in one point. But if you need to do some adjustment, you can pull these wires out, you can bend them back and forth, you can add a little more twist in there like I showed you, and make that fit together. But I'm actually really happy with this. This worked out really, really nicely and that looks just about perfect. So I just turned on my soldering iron and while that's heating up, I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to get this wire. So you got all this wire. You don't need all this. I mean, you can use it for something else, I'm sure. Don't use this connector on here, use this one. Looks like a mini coaxial cable. So I do, I go out a few inches, just give myself some room to work with, just in case I mess up. And I just, I snip it off. Then I take this and there's two wires in here. Uh, and just so that they don't come apart in there, cause like the middle one can kind of slip up and down and mess up the connector down here. So I take these uh, forceps from the hospital and I just kind of clamp down. If you have locking pliers, if you've got to clamp anything, uh, I've noticed that this makes a huge difference because I definitely wasted a few of these connectors pulling the wires apart accidentally. So now you want to strip off the external um, coat on here and get down to the first wire. Here you go, so now once you open it up, you have this middle wire that's still insulated and you have all these fibers. For right now, I just kind of push them all down. We'll deal with those later. And then you want to strip this middle section. And I like to leave uh, a little bit of distance. Let me see, I kind of measure it on here. Maybe like two or three millimeters of this, uh, of the insulation on this wire I leave and then I strip off the rest. There we go. These external wires now, you're going to want to uh, arrange them. You want to separate them into three groups and arrange it 120 degrees from each other. If you were making the skew planer wheel, you'd want to have four groups 90 degrees from each other. Here you go. So now you can just kind of eyeball them uh, just because your other angles are going to be precise on here and you'll make these fit to this. So now I get out my soldering iron and it's warm. Yeah. I'm going to put a little bit of fresh solder on the tip. Knock off the extra. And now I want to place one bead right in the middle where these three 
wires connect, I want to solder them all together. There, so I got a nice fat bead of solder right there in the middle, so I'm just going to let that cool. There, so I can see it's set up now, so I'm just going to pull this out of the little jig I made. And right here, this is the hardest part, and you're done with this. As you can see, it sits flat on the table, because I did that on purpose, like I told you guys, to keep these flat. You have all these angles set up, and you have all of this right now. So now you have this, and you have this wire, and if you notice, you kind of set on here, it matches up perfectly. So you are just about home at this point. You just got to take these wires, I wrap it around each three of these, all three of these legs, and just kind of set this this middle solder joint that we've already done next to this wire. So there we go. Now we are going to solder this together. You need to solder each one of these three base wires and right in the middle. So now I take a look at this and I check. It is not the prettiest, um, but all of these are soldered on each of these three bases here. This middle wire is soldered to this middle connector. And there are no stray wires hanging off. Oh, here's a few. Just going to pull those out and cut them off. There we go. And there's no connection between this top joint and these bottom ones. As you can see, that's a really nice clover leaf. And that was pretty easy. I mean, that really didn't take too much time. I must say, the first few times I made these, it was really hard. And uh, it definitely took me a while. But now I can just fly through these things. It's not that difficult at all. And so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this hot glue and apply it to this middle joint and down here. This does change the frequency a little bit, and I've heard that will affect your range. But, I mean, I'm already getting at least a mile on these so I uh, so I'm really not too worried about that and it helps just keep give this some more uh, structural integrity so here's the finished product and I've got to fly with these a little bit already and for 5.8 gigahertz FPV video system in my experience, circularly polarized antennas are the best to go with because 5.8 gigahertz gets a lot of interference and these really help resist the interference. And they're pretty easy to make. Um, I'd really like to thank RC Explorer for putting up the guide how to make these because they sell for a pretty expensive online, about 60 bucks a pair. So you can make this with like some time and some experience. You can make a pair of these pretty easily for yourself. So thanks for watching.